everybody thanks for watching and just a quick reminder that the final two books in the five books of moses series is now available numbers in deuteronomy is now available all five books is now available on flash drive and for download and for dvd also people have been asking about the flash drives this saturday there will be a sale on the flash drives again the first 20 people who purchased the flash drives will receive the next five dvds and digital downloads for free meaning you will all get the dvds in the mail as well as the digital download links for the next five dvds the first 20 people who order so this will begin on saturday it will end that tuesday for this sale so try to be the first uh one of the first 20 people so now i want to get into this video put out my last video about popularity problem now one of the things and uh, as you can see with the title of the video one of the things we have to realize you know when we look at everything as far as this system and the way it has been set up and I always talk about universal law talk about the trap we all know about the system and the trap that's set up for us to fail what we have to realize is the system is really giving us choice and there's something that's hard for us to see because uh it seems like things is the way that it is and we always say that you know things are the way that it is and we always make uh comments to the fact that you know we are being set up we've been put in places to fail and that's basically what it is you know we have been given opportunities and it's been rigged the opportunities and everything is geared more so because of the programming for us to make the wrong choices and that's what it's about when you really pay attention everything is choice you choose to be where you are you choose to either excel or to fail and if you have the right knowledge if you have you know the right tools and the capability to uh, go far you know the education or what have you you can do a lot of things but to get to certain points of success everything is really going to be based upon the choices that you make you know starting at a young age and that's the issue if you are not taught about what choices are the right choices or what you should do what directions you should go basically if you're not taught how to play the game you know you're going to fail you're not going to make it you're not going to pass certain levels you're going to get left back you have to start all over in certain places and you know we have been basically set up to make the wrong choices now if you pay attention to the system and everybody know that you know the powers that be they create a problem so they can then present a solution that's basically you know a part of their agenda so they create a problem we react to it and they give us choices to the solution and the whole thing is no matter what we choose it's part of the agenda it's set up for us to either go along with the with the agenda uh or one way or another basically so you know this is what has happened now we can go back and just look at you know segregation and we basically ask for desegregation now in hindsight when we look back at it we can see that wasn't the best choice for us when we really understand how things were progressing in the black community and how we were moving up as far as economics it wasn't really the best choice for us to make now when you go back and look at history and it's another reason why they throw this history in our face to get us to understand this is what we ask for we ask to be with them we asked we marched we got beat down we took beat downs just for us to be able to vote for something that has never benefited us so everything we did you know civil rights movement voting all the people that was beat down the people that was killed so many things we endured for the right to vote for a system that has never benefited us you know as far as our voting so you know no matter who we voted for we never got anything as a people so again choices the choices we made and everything has been rigged for us to end up making choices that's not going to benefit us so now as a result of us asking for desegregation we lost our you know business infrastructure we lost our black businesses and we lost the ability to basically come together as a people and do things that will benefit us and you know instead we took the choice to go on and desegregate and to try to blend in and mix in and fit in with you know white america 
And because of that, we lost our identity. We are basically, you know, not united. We are not a strong force the way we used to be. And our leaders have been basically, you know, bought off and killed because of them being able to be in the system that allows them to basically, you know, fit in with their masters, fit in with the white man, which we have basically all been trained in some form of another since slavery to, to favor them. And you have a lot of people that do. So the whole thing with that is when you have people that had the opportunity now to go ahead and, and basically be with, uh, you know, white people and white businesses and, and join different clubs and go to different places and do things they wasn't able to do uh, with us being segregated. A lot of people took to that. A lot of people looked at that as an opportunity to be something or to do something to try to fit in with the culture or fit in what, you know, you know, the white system. And a lot of people just was lost at that time and didn't have the understanding of who we were and real economics and how it benefited us to just stay desegregated and to build, you know, uh, our economic system on our own. So again, that choice we made, we marched, we protested. They remind us of it every year, you know, civil rights and everything, Black History Month, all we see, Dr. King, and you have a lot of people that will come out and show you and tell you that Dr. King, you know, maybe he did know, maybe he didn't know, but he was basically used to bring about this whole downfall. So it's a choice that we made. And it's the same choice that we made, again, with the whole hip hop culture. We basically marched for that as well. And it was a Trojan horse that basically has come in and destroyed the black community. If you remember, everybody knows about N.W.A., gangsta rap and them basically running on the whole notion that you know they're basically talking about what's happening in the hood the whole bait was we rapping about what the cops is doing to us but then once you know people accepted that form of entertainment it switched over from you know rapping about cops and what's happening in the neighborhood as far as from a poverty level to us you know completely being violent against each other and a lot of people, you know, didn't realize how many people was out there marching against, you know, gangster rap, as I talked about in previous videos. But I mean, I talked about before, you have to pay attention to just the names and how they clearly wanted us to portray ourselves as violent gangsters. I mean, when you look at, you know, Ruthless Records, with Easy e it's called Ruthless Records, Death Row, you know, Murder, Inc., you know, all these rap names, you know, Tech 9 people with gun names, everybody basically coming into the hip hop culture with some form of violent name or violence or drug dealing or something that pertains to something negative attached to their whole name or, you know, their group, you know, and this is this was put out, you know, mainstream, put out on the forefront, even the people that was up and coming underground felt like they had to take on that persona of this gangster negative you know artist in order to do something and this is what we asked for this is the choice we made as a people to bring and put out you know into you know the populace you know and have it represent our, our culture us again choice choice that we didn't understand the implications of a choice that we made and again when I talk about universal law and I talk about nothing that this government system is doing is illegal, when you pay attention, this is what I mean. Because when you go back and look at it, we ask for it. But it's important to understand the fact that, you know, we were set up to ask for it. And had we had more patience and understanding and, uh, you know, good leaders, we would have known what was happening, you know, uh, before we made that choice. Now, to me, from looking at everything, the worst choice we've made since slavery was keeping the religion and religion that choice for us to follow that has really you know destroyed us more so as a people because it gave us false hope and made us believe that we had this special you know god savior up there looking out for us when we just came out of hundreds of years of captivity and this savior didn't help us then and damn sure didn't help us when we got out of it. So people making that choice to accept uh, religion as some kind of truth, some kind of guidance for their life has been just the worst. Because, you know, 
it made us really just sit back and wait and hope and pray instead of actually doing something that would benefit us. And that's the crazy part about religion. People who, you know, ask for something and not really have the full understanding that anything that you ask for, anything that you, anything that you want on a physical level, this is the physical world, anything that you want, you have to physically go and get it. Or have someone that's physical, that's real, bring it to you. There's nothing spooky that's going to happen that's going to give you what you want. So people just really praying and hoping just magically something happens without them actually putting in the work. It's, it's, it's crazy. So, you know, religion gave us this false hope. But of course, you have to choose to believe. You have to choose to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to choose to be baptized. You have to choose to read the book and accept the religion. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. These are choices you have to make. And it's almost like, you know, when you think about it with church, you know, them saying that you have to make the choice. You have to choose to accept Jesus. You have to say the words. This is a choice you had to make. So religion has been one of the choices that we made as a people that has really been the biggest backfire and downfall. I mean, the billions of dollars that we give the churches that we spend for nothing, you know, not really benefiting us. And then, you know, when people need things, uh, when we need stuff as a people, a school or what have you, you know, it's not there. The church is not giving us back any of that money to help us out. So, you know, it, it's been one of the biggest problems. Of course, I always speak about religion that we are seeing. But again, choice. It's always been that choice. And I always tell people to look at the whole metaphor of God and Satan as it being choice. You have to choose to be good or choose to be bad. When you always see those little cartoon, you know, devil on one shoulder, angel on another shoulder, the other shoulder, it's choice. It's representing the dual nature that exists that is good, evil, masculine, feminine, yin, yang, we know. It's a choice. So you have to choose a side. You can't serve both masters. Plain and simple. So, you know, that's one of those things that really <laughs> a lot of people got to look at and just, you know, see it for what it is. And just think about in the Bible where it's telling you, you know, to serve your earthly master. Slaves, obey your earthly master with fear and trembling as you would Jesus Christ. That's serving two masters. It's telling you to serve the white man as you would Jesus Christ. So it's telling you to serve two masters. So that's another contradiction in the Bible I always like to point out. But that is what is what's basically giving you the hint of choice. You have to choose. And either you're going to choose to follow what this system said is right and good or what have you. Or you're going to understand what's really going on and follow what's right. You have to make the choice of what's supposed to be. So now if you want to control the people's wealth, the economic system, and you want to put them in a place and tell them, okay, we're the bosses, we're running everything, but it's going to be fair. Everything's going to be equal. You know, how do you sit there and tell them that with a straight face, but then have a system in place that's set up for them to fail? How are you going to get them to follow that system? And that's basically what it is. One, lack of education. You not understanding the value that you have in true economics as a person. That's one thing. Keep that information away from those people. But two, it's too simple to say, you know, if you go to school, if you study and you work hard, you can grow up and you can be rich. That's that's the easy way. That's the easy way. That's if they just left us alone, didn't spoil you nothing or sabotage anything then we would say, okay, this is the way to go. This is the choice we should make. We should choose to be good, to not break the law. We should choose to go to school and learn as much as we can. Be smart, be educated, go to college, start our own business, be entrepreneurs. That's the way we would go, but that's too easy. So the choice we're given is first one, we chose already hip hop. So that's the choice we took. And now we're following that choice. We're living with that choice. And now if you want to keep these people in poverty, you have to make sure they choose to be in poverty. Because if I want to be rich, I want to go ahead and make money, I'm going to just go do it. But see, now it's roadblocks in a way. It's more choices you have to make. And that's the problem. When you have multiple choices, 
which one is the right one to choose. And the easiest, the most simplest, the right choice is hard because all the other choices are much more fun. Plain and simple. So you have that choice. Choose to follow the hip-hop culture, what's popular, what everybody else is doing. And this is how they have got us. They made a culture for us to follow that basically tells us that looking poor is not in, even though you're actually poor. You want to make sure that you don't look poor and act poor and be poor, even though you're actually poor. You want to joke about being poor here and there, but you want to put out the vision that you have money. You have to think about what kind of economic, financial choice is it for you to choose to buy stuff that's more expensive, too expensive, that you cannot afford versus something just as good quality, not bad looking at all, brand spanking new for a lot less. And this is stuff that we just pass off as nothing because it's the norm in the black community. But we don't really pay attention to how we spend so much money on stuff that we do not need. We don't need it. And we go broke. And people got closets full of $200 sneakers and nice stuff in their mom house or no car. Crazy clothes, crazy nice stuff. And then they can't afford to pay their rent. They late on bills. Their credit is messed up. And it's because of the choices you made, the things you chose to do, what you chose to follow, that you have been set up and sabotaged to follow. So I always tell people when you go out there and you see homeless people, especially brothers and sisters that's out there homeless, they don't got much, that's on drugs. You got to realize that they made the wrong choices because they were set up to make those choices. See, we talk down and we, we talk about homeless people and poor people and we say, well, nigga, I'm working hard, I'm doing this. Because you were just a little bit smarter or maybe you just had somebody in your life to push you to the right direction, but we can't forget about the people who didn't have those people that was under the same system as us and maybe had more harder choices put on them and you know more impossible situations put on them that they wasn't able to get out of no matter what choice they made so a lot of people one of the main reasons why they can't really you know get into you know the government and the whole system and everything like that because it's because they really understand you know a lot of people make excuses for themselves it's because they understand that when you when you bring it all down you add it all up you look at the whole thing and you step back and take a look at it we have been set up to fail, but you have to understand the choice was always there, plain and simple. We've just been trained to make the wrong choices. See, it's tough for people to really grasp this, to really think about it, because a lot of the stuff that we see is so normal to us. It's so regular. It just seems like it's the way it is, and it's how we talk. It's the way it is. It's how it's supposed to be. It just seems that way when it's not. You know, you have to really think about brainwashing, brain training, programming, seriously. And a lot of people don't realize it. I mean, again, what would make a woman who wants respect, who don't want to be talked down to, again, put herself out there like that, you know, set up a camera to twerk and then get upset when people call her names. Just think about the psyche in that. People are going to call you a whore. People are going to call you all kinds of names. And you don't like that. You don't want that. Yet, you still made the choice to put yourself in a position to receive that kind of, you know, feedback. Why? You know, wow. What would make a person, you know, pick up a gun and kill another person, you know, because they got more money than them? You know, that's crazy. Somebody who's, who's successful, who work hard, who's doing something. For a person to want to take their life and take what they have, you know, think about that. And then the whole thinking is crazy because you're going to get caught. And when you get caught, you're going to lose everything, probably even your life. That's training. That's brainwashing. We look at these people and say they're crazy. They have been trained. We have been trained to really, you know, do these things, to make these choices. And again, you know, when you have the music with that message behind it, and people not having the consciousness to, you know, block it out, to understand what's really going on, they fall victim to it. And this is what's been happening to us in the black community. We are being trained to make these choices. So you choose to sell drugs. You choose to kill this person. You choose to take that person's life. 
you know, you get to that point where the gun is pulled out and you got a person's life in your hand and you choose to take it. You choose to take it. You choose to pull the trigger and just ruin somebody's entire family and everything. What can drive a person to the point to make that choice? And you have to think about that. You know, it's a lot that's going on out here and it's because of choices that we make. And um, a lot of people not really having the mental capacity, the understanding to uh, to understand it being set up, plain and simple. You know, being set up, you've been put in a position of poverty, a position to fail. Anybody in poverty that's going through any kind of struggle, your natural instinct, you know, your whole human survival kicks in and you're going to do what you think needs to be done, you know. To, to get ahead, to be successful, to eat, to feed your family, or what have you. So these are the conditions you've been put in. This is the, the setup. And now you have all these different choices. You know, the impossible hard choice to go and try to figure it out, you know, that could lead to starvation or what have you. Or the immediate choice of selling drugs or robbing somebody and risking your life or what have you. And, you know, the reward is more enticing than the risk itself. And you get to a point, some people, where they don't care if they die. You know, it's like, it's over. This is it. I need to do something. You know, so they do what they do. Choices, plain and simple. And we all live and die by them. And we are all where we are at because of them. And what we need to understand as, a, as black people, we've been set up to choose what we have chosen. So it's hard for white people to understand, you know, why we are in poverty why the situation is the way that it is because they have the same choices and they always say that we all have the same choices you know you choose what you choose you chose to do this or what have you but their system their choices is not rigged like ours is so they can go ahead and listen to the music but then they gotta you know they get to go home to two-parent household a huge family with they have moral support they have money a backing so even if you know tommy has a drug problem they're gonna have an intervention you know, it's going to work out for Tommy. He's going to be okay. 